love in action. And that is our theme for today. So we're going to continue to build this wave of energy, of heart coherence that we're pulsing into the field along with all of the wonderful offerings that are happening in World Unity Week. We also have a mantra. So here is our mantra for today. Love fuels me. Love inspires me. Love guides me. My thoughts, words, and actions are guided by love. I am love in action. I am love in action. <laughs> Let us all just recite that mantra today over and over again and be love in action. So I'd like to bring on the co-founder of the Global Coherence Pulse. She's also one of the founding members of the Global Coherence Initiative, HeartMass Global Coherence Initiative. She's also the board um, president for IONS, Institute of Noetic Science. And um, Claudia has been bringing coherence into all of the organizations that she has um, given her love and energy into. And Claudia, it's wonderful to have you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Teresa, for all you're doing. Thank you everyone for joining us again today. And especially those who've joined us over the last two days. And this is day number three. I'd like to briefly remind our regulars who have the Global Coherence Initiative app on their phones to please join us there preferably in the dedicated Global Coherence Pulse group, if you know how to do that, or if not, in the Global Coherence main group is fine too. And also to those who have the optional personal sensor, please consider wearing it during our pulse so we can get a sense of our collective coherence levels. For everyone else, please know that none of what I just said is necessary to participate in the pulse or to be part of our ongoing citizen science experiment. It's an additional step that some of us are taking. And if you'd like to know more about it, you can visit the Global Coherence Pulse website. But either way, we are here today to pulse the field with coherent heart energy. And either way, our network of global sensors are going 24 seven. So we might observe correlations between our increasing collective heart coherence and changes in the sensor network whether it's our magnetometers or the random number generators or other measures, we're doing that so we can help shift the Western scientific paradigm from one that's based in separation to one that's based in the fundamental unity of all life. And I shared a little bit about that on Saturday, which was our first pulse with Sri Pritaji, as Teresa said, and she'll also be leading us today in just a couple of minutes. But there was an interesting question that showed up in Saturday's text chat that I thought relates perfectly to today, today's focus of love. Because a few people were asking, what is love anyway? And could love itself be evolving? Our partner, the HeartMath Institute, considers heart coherence to be the physiological signature of love at the core of the human system. Because it's when we embody authentic feelings of love and other regenerative emotions like compassion and gratitude that we naturally become more coherent, which itself can be understood as a state of optimal psychophysiological functioning through the healing of fragmentation in the mind, body, spirit matrix, creating a whole greater than the sum of our parts. In other words, love makes us whole not the objects of our love, but the energy of the love that remembers our oneness itself. And not just individually, but also collectively, because we know that the coherence within us becomes the coherence around us, as our friend Greg Braden likes to say. Then yesterday, Pulse leader Mira Michelle reminded us that we are earth dust and stardust. And I had the good fortune of knowing Apollo 14 lunar module pilot and founder of the Institute of Noetic Sciences, Captain Ed Mitchell, who was famous in the 20th century for walking on the moon, but is becoming even more famous in this century for the epiphany he had in space about the oneness of all life. Gazing at earth from his capsule window, he too was reminded that we are stardust 
but even more profoundly, his epiphany revealed to him that agape love or unconditional love, the love that remembers our oneness, is the organizing principle of the entire universe. So while heart math has demonstrated that love is an organizing principle in our bodies, how far are we from science demonstrating that love is an organizing principle of the entire universe? That's my mantra. However soon or far away that may be, we aren't waiting for proof to take action. So let's move to our pulse meditation with Sri Pritaji. I'm going to introduce her now. Um, Sri Pritaji is an internationally known transformational leader and spiritual philosopher and is co-founder along with her husband, Sri Krishnaji of Ekam and ONO Academy, dedicated to the transformation and enlightenment of human consciousness. Last August, they produced a week long online global peace festival that inspired a million people worldwide to participate. And they recently co-authored a US bestseller, The Four Sacred Secrets. Sri Pritaji is chief mentor for the entire faculty of her spiritual academy and travels around the world to offer her four day signature program, Field of Awakening. We're so grateful to have her back to lead our pulse again today. Namaste. So wonderful to be back in the Unity Week. The last time I was here, we explored the dimension of unity. We saw that unity cannot be attained through upholding it as an ideology or coming to terms through agreements and through pacts. As individuals, we have to move away from a state of divisive consciousness to oneness consciousness. Only when we are able to live and act from the realization of oneness of all existence can there be unity in our collective action. Let's today explore the dimension of love. Can love be practiced? Can love be idealized? Can love be defined as a set of actions and behaviors that we need to habituate ourselves to? That would actually be the antithesis of love. Practice of love is not love. Or put it the other way, idealizing love is not love. Conditioned and habitual actions are not love. I say that they are not love not because they are bad or wrong, but because they do not have the power to impact and create a transformation in our external reality. If love in action means healing those hearts that are hurt and wounded, be they be your family members or the members of your community or the people whom you work with or the people around you in the world, say, who are impacted with the pain or the pandemic or impacted by the effects of climate change. 
if love in action means creating a sustainable world that is a safe haven for our children and their children to live and enjoy if love in action means actually healing the mother earth and stop humanity from hurting her and her billions of life forms if this is the impact you want to create then you need a full awakening to love in your consciousness to me love is a movement in consciousness from a state of disconnection to a state of connection a disconnection is a state where your experiences are limited to yourself alone connection is where you move beyond your limited self to actually feeling and experiencing the other in this space of connection you are able to experience the joys and the sorrows of the other as if they were your own when your consciousness awakens to this state of connection you actually begin to radiate a powerful field around you a powerful field that begins to impact people this powerful field can heal their bodies this powerful field can heal the wounds of their heart in this state of connection this powerful field can dissolve the conflict in their mind calm their fears and agitations and actually give the other the same experience of connection that you feel that you experience in your consciousness you call this the field of heart coherence and you already know that the electromagnetic field radiated by the heart is impacting the earth's electromagnetic field and several individuals on the planet are having this state of awe uh, who experience the state of heart, heart coherence could create a positive impact on global consciousness the mystics in india they spoke of anahata or the heart chakra awakening and they said when heart awakening happens the mystic sound or the anahata nada actually emanates from the heart as reverberations and flows out this sound vibration that flows from your heart is the primordial sound of the universe that existed when the universe was born when your heart chakra awakens you experience the cosmic consciousness within you we can call it as one of the most sacred of human experiences the greatest healers mystics and awakened beings 
have had magnificent experiences around the heart chakra, the Anahata chakra. But why is heart, the heart closed for so many people in the world today? Because every human being is a wounded person. Yes, definitely stress. You are wounded. You are hurt by your parents, by school, and by society. Each person may have many bitter experiences in the past. When you love someone in the past, be it a friend or your, say, somebody whom you trusted, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, a sibling or a parent, and say you were disappointed by that person, then you become wounded. Even if you have practically moved on in life, the wound internally lingers in your consciousness. There is a very popular story in India. Yeah. It's a story on Tenali Rama's cat. Tenali Rama was a wise minister of a famous South Indian kingdom. Takes on a strange challenge to make a cat hate milk. So this cat is deliberately served hot milk that burns its tongue. And the traumatized cat refuses to drink anything white in color thereafter. Just like how the cat was traumatized, the same way, you have stopped trusting people because of your wounded heart. To trust, to feel safe, feels very difficult. That is why you become extremely cautious and untrusting. We as human beings have been on the run from each other. Actually, we have been running from our own selves. You will still want people in your life, not because you love them, but because you fear being lonely. It is like a constant game of you be my life, but please maintain a distance. You be with me, but don't get too close because you are afraid of being wounded. You are afraid of wounding others with your anger. And some wounds are unexpected explainable. They actually even flow into your lives from your previous lives. And you may for no reason develop a deep, deep dislike towards someone. You will have to become free of such a dislike too. Otherwise, this vasana and this samskara the impressions, either from the previous lives or the current past lives, will continue to flow, not only in this life, but it will continue to flow into your next life and it will continue to haunt you. How do we begin our journey towards healing ourselves and healing others? 
The only way is to awaken to heartfelt connection. To be able to feel yourself and to be able to feel the other. You will connect to each other only when you realize that just the way you are wounded, the other two is wounded in life. Actually, no one is an exception to these wounds. If the seed of love can take root within you, you will engage in a heartfelt conversation. And that would be love in action. You will listen to the other with an intention of feeling the pain. And not to prove your goodness, not prove your rightness to them. If you simply opened your heart and listened to what is hurting someone, that very loving listening can heal them. When your partner, when your child moves into an anger outburst in the middle of a conversation, most of the times they are not asking for answers or for solutions. What they are actually looking for is an experience of connection. They want you to listen. They want you to feel them. Something magical happens when you feel connected to each other. You heal the other and they heal. At a very fundamental level, the one experience our brain, our hearts, and our bodies long for is this beautiful state of connection. Let us understand what this connection is. Connection is not an act. It is not the same as relating or conversing on the phone or in person or sending messages or even doing activities together. Connection is a rainbow of various states of consciousness. Connection is gratitude. It is an awareness that we are the result of the innumerable efforts of so many people and so many life forms that we know or we may never know. Connection is compassion. It is an awareness of the oneness of human experience. My fear is not different from your fear. My joy, the way I feel, I feel joy and the way you feel joy is not different. The experience of sorrow when it happens in me, when it happens in you, when it happens in somebody else, it is just the same experience. Connection is compassion, which is to be rooted in the oneness of human experience. Connection is inclusivity, that is, 
it is taking into consideration your own well-being along with the well-being of others connection is sensitivity it is when we feel the happiness and the unhappiness of the other as if it were our own and we respond with love connection is the elixir on which our very brain survive without the beautiful states of love and connection <clears throat> nourishing our souls our lives are desolate heart connection is a practice we have designed to set you on the path of enduring love in relationships not only in relationships towards life also the time that we have now i would lead you into a meditation a meditation that will open your heart today are you all ready for this please be seated in a relaxed and a comfortable position make sure your spine is erect close your eyes place your palms on your heart feel as if you are inhaling and exhaling from your heart relax your palms now recollect any one profound experience of love from your past
go back to those moments of love when you have perhaps felt that someone had truly understood you beyond what you expressed when someone had truly respected your feelings perhaps you felt someone truly recognized your worth or that someone accepted you as one some of you may have also been flooded with divine love during a mystical experience immerse in that experience of love from the past it doesn't matter whether this experience of love happened to you yesterday or it happened to you many years ago all you need to do is reimmerse in that experience your heart has come awake with this experience of love now think of one person in your life who needs to be loved this moment
radiate this love to that person. Feel love flow, flow from your heart to that person. from the space of loving connection. Bless them that their lives must be beautiful. You have now experienced the state of connectedness. This beautiful state of connection is immensely powerful. It will give purpose to your life. It will bring love into your relationships. This state of connection will sensitize your heart to feeling others. You can conquer any challenges in life with the strength of this love. Let there be love in your hearts. Let there be love in the hearts of your loved ones. Let there be love in the world around you.
bring a gentle smile onto your face. Take a conscious breath. You may slowly open your eyes. Thank you for immersing in this experience. And I will see you all very soon for compassion in action. Thank you so much. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, Rupita G. I have tears, tears of just love and joy just rolling down my face. So beautiful. Love to all of you. <laughs> so much love to you and to your whole community. Thank you. I can feel the presence of the field of your community here with us today. Namaste. <laughs>